I know. Our theme today is transparency. So we printed off people's names on this nice transparency paper. And then we have a series of prompts about transparency. So one of my favorites is how much information is too much information. Take it, slide it into your name holder. So a little visual cue to our theme for the day. You can grab some quiche or some bread pudding and coffee. All right, thank you so much for having me here. I'm so looking forward to talking about this topic, transparency. And I, I want to start it off with kind of opening it up to um, the space, uh, because I want to hear uh, some first words of what you think when you hear transparency. Anyone? Open. Open. I do, I'm going to just write some of these down, because I'm, I'm curious. Secrets. Secrets. See through. See through. Naked. Naked. Light. Light. Available. Available. Sorry, available. Okay. Yep. Biases revealed. Biases revealed. Okay. Great. Honest. Honest. Any others? Vulnerable. Vulnerable. Any last ones? Free from pretense or deceit. Aha! <laughs> awesome. So I, I had similar thoughts um, towards the idea of transparency. And whenever I start with an idea, I always go to Mr. Webster. Um, and I like to look up a definition and really take a look and see what, um, what the dictionary says. So when I went to the, the definition, you can read it, but what really caught my eye was this idea of having the property of transmitting light without appreciable scattering so that bodies lying beyond are seen clearly. And without appreciable scattering really caught my attention. Does anyone know what that means? I didn't either, so I looked it up. Okay, capable of being perceived or measured. So what it means is that a transparency is manipulated just a little bit so you can't notice it. Right? So it's, if, if it can have appreciable scattering, it means that it's just enough that you can't measure it or perceive it. And I found that to be really interesting about the idea of a transparency and that it isn't clear and maybe not totally transparent and that if there's enough about it that you can manipulate it just a little bit, that that can alter a lot if there's a lot, you know, with a lot of little manipulations, that can do something that can create a big wave. So I started to research this idea of, of transparencies and where they exist in our society. Um, oh, sorry, here. We're going to talk about four different areas that I'm interested in, um, or maybe you're interested in too. So I have the transparency of emotion, transparency of perspectives, transparency of information, and transparency of light. In each of these areas, I'll show some of my work that kind of fit into these ideas of transparency. Okay, I'll let you look at that. I'm not going to read it all. <coughs> all right. Okay, so what I started to think about was the individual and the fact that they look through your eyes. Well, yeah, but the interesting thing about the eye is that we start with a lens. And the lens is basically a transparent film that takes light and focuses it, focuses it to your retina and then takes it to your optical nerve, to your brain, which creates imagery. So the first transparency that happens is in your own eyeballs. And that is custom to each person. So each person already is creating a sort of manipulated view of reality through their own eyes. Okay, I am interested in eyes. As a set designer, I create lots of eyes and lots of headpieces. And the eyes are something that are just 
intriguing. I mean, when you look into somebody's eyes, you can tell so much from a person. You know, you, you have these shifty eyes, and you're like, that person's lying. You have honest eyes, and you're like, hey, that, you know, it's, it's, you have uh, happy eyes, you have sad eyes, you have angry eyes. And suddenly, these eyes are giving you all kinds of communication. So there's a lot that says about a person through the eyes. And it has to do with communication, but also has to do with emotion. And I'm going to get to that point, but I'm going to scan through a few of these. Because when I create a headpiece, I, go to, I try to create an essence of a being or an animal. I do a lot of work in animal. And let me kind of get through this. So. Okay. So the idea of transparency of emotion. So we have the eyes that start to create a type of emotion that's communicated. And I'm going to take this into the world of performance, because performance is a, a space where I really exist as a performance artist. Um, I think performance art is an incredible place to express an idea and a story. Um, it's a platform where many people come together and they're there for a specific time, a specific place, and a time duration watching the same thing. This is really important in our society as we seek this idea of reality. And, and performance arts is a space where you are there and you exist in that world with a group of people to experience that. And with performance also is an emotion that comes across. And I want to talk a little bit about emotion in our society, because I think that this is important. And the transparency of emotion doesn't really rely on light, because I know that we talked about that was one of the ideas that transparency and light work together. This is kind of a more meta metaphorical idea, and it's the idea of barriers. Okay? In our society, I feel like emotions don't, don't really have a place to exist. You know, it, it's, it's this place where each of us have intense emotions, I'm sure where you can get really angry, but you don't put that out in your business. You know, you're pissed off, but you don't say, you know, you keep that all inside and you contain it, contain it. And you create these transparent walls around you so that everything stays in. Now, I had similar things like this. I'm like, okay, what's your coping mechanisms? A lot of people seek types of coping mechanisms. You know, uh, it, maybe there's outlash. Right now in our society, there's so much outlash and anger and rage, and that's because nobody has any place to put any of these emotions. Now, I use performance art. And I take those, and I take those ideas, and I put them in all kinds of characters. I put them in um, animal primal uh, instinctual behavior. You know, I, I let anger exist. I let laughter exist. I let humor. I let jealousy. I let uh, you know rage, and all of these things exist into performance art. And I like to keep it raw. So performance art for me is creating an experience where somebody comes to it and is able to feel those emotions through that performance that is happening. Now, I have to mention this man, Walter Benjamin. Okay? Uh, he is a famous theorist, and he wrote an uh, article, and I'm going to get this right here because I don't want to. The Work of Art in the Age of Mechanical Reproduction. And what he says is that um, the origin of the art is where the essence lies. And once it gets reproduced, you get separated from that origin. Okay? And that's important. I want you to think about this because I'm going to go farther with this idea. Because we're starting with performance, and performance is the origin. It's the place where you're at. You're here with me right now. You're here at this creative mornings. You're experiencing this together. This is an origin. Now we're getting it videotaped. We're reproducing that, OK? We're going through something else and going a step further. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do kind of the same thing. I'm going to flip through some performances that we've created, kind of get an idea of where my aesthetic is. Later, if you have a question about a specific performance, I can go back and talk about it. OK, well, this is Dr. Sustain. This is the one, the character that comes out and does all kinds of crazy characters. And the thing about Dr. Sustain, too, is nothing is hidden. All things are out on the stage. The character changes and morphs and forms through the props that are all out on stage.
Um, this is uh, Queen May and the Bells was an important, and I'm going to talk about this a little bit too. Um, this is 10 years past, okay? We did this 10 years ago, and it was a modern opera troupe. It was three women, Gendale Gendale Anna Kelly, Tina Matthews, and myself created a modern opera troupe, and we told stories through song and music, and we engineered electronic instruments and developed costumes. And then we put this out there, and we played fest all of it was guerrilla type art. So we would play festivals and show up, we would do bars, we would do opera houses, wherever we performed these sort of scenarios. This is going into a, a different world, Tina Matthews. But then um, we developed our work. This is at the Zero One Biennial out in San Jose. And they asked us to develop a performance that talked about technology into um, our society. And what we did is we went to the native uh, beings that existed there and talked about um, a story of how coyotes came from rocks. This was from the uh, Adena Indians. It was a tale, and we took that and brought it to life through a parade of screamers. This is how we thought technology was affecting our society. And the, uh, the thing that we did a lot with our performance is that we broke that fourth wall. In performance, there's an idea of the fourth wall, and that's another kind of transparent barrier that we would break. We would take our world and we would put it out into the audience, always breaking that fourth wall. Here's our screamers. I got to scream, scream as loud as you want, all the way down, and people followed and screamed with us. We actually came and uh, started doing performances actually using walls, interestingly enough. And this is a project called Herd, which is still in work. This is another project, and it's looking at migrations of human and animal behaviors and seeing how they affect different parts of our society. And so we would create these walls and actually herd people through gallery spaces. Um, and then open up the wall and close it and herd the people through and in a performance um, space. See, performance, you can do a lot of different things and put people in places that they may or may not want to be but have to experience. Um, we continued with this project for walls and we made maneuverable walls so we could create different spaces so the audience would come through and we'd switch the walls around them and then do a situation and then they would experience that. And then we'd switch the walls again and then they would feel what that was like. This is we did in LA. Um, this was just a project we did uh, that I did um, creating a musk ox that lived in climate change. I worked with a bunch of different scientists and did a big lecture um, on uh, the impacts of climate change and the different ways and storytelling how it could affect animals. This was at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts, and this actually was a little bit about disassociation, about bipolarism, about two brains splitting and coming back together and inside uh, skin. Okay, and I'm gonna have a small video for you.
Okay, so whipping the cream was basically about a mother-daughter relationship, and you can see it's very, it's kind of provocative, a little bit sexual, maybe she's masturbating, she's whipping the cream. So, you know, it's kind of this idea of, of really just putting it out there and letting people take it. Um, okay, so we're going on to the next one. So we talked about the eye and this idea of the transparent lens that's in the eye, so let's take it broader, and we're going to talk about the camera. Uh, cameras have given so much, uh, 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 they're so accessible today, right? Um, and I want to go farther with this. Let me go further. Okay. I do a lot of film. Um, I work a lot with cameras. And something about, um, that I'm, I'm very, very curious uh, with what's happening in our society is the idea of the camera lens and how it has been impacting. Um, our choices, um, how we um, define ourselves. And what I'm seeing is because the lens is so accessible, uh, we are having a ton of uh, explosion, like an explosion in the YouTube world of self videos. So you have the selfie, you have the do it yourself videos, um, you have a lot of ideas of reality, okay? So we're trying to capture reality with the camera lens. And I, I find that to be very interesting because if we go back to our idea of what transparency means and this idea of the appreciable scattering and of it not being a true transparent space, then you have a lot of choice and manipulation with the camera. And the camera is used in many ways in today's society to manipulate audiences, okay? And this could be good or bad. Manipulation, when I say it, is just kind of a skewing or an altering of a perspective. Mm, working in film, um, I graduated at the University of California, Santa Cruz, and I developed a film there. And uh, my goal was to learn about shot design and how to use perspective to enhance a film and also to direct focus to what I wanted to tell. So thinking about linear perspectives, like in paintings, you have a lot of angles that you can direct your eye to a specific um, imagery or object. Uh, you can also do that in film. Um, you know the, the one point perspective, right? You have the train rails that direct your eyes to the, hor the horizon line. Um, but you also have ideas of a point of view where you're seeing it through the narrator, or you have um, uh, like a uh, bird's eye view. So uh, you have all these different kind of shot angles that you can use. So if you put that together with the lens that you're using, so there's different times, types of perspective lenses. So you have your phone lens, which says, I am existing in this space and I am taking a picture of what's happening now. And when you see that quality of lens, people can think about that and say, oh, this is somebody doing, doing exactly that. Or you can go to a higher grade lens of a professional lens, which is not as believable in the reality space. Does this make sense so far? OK. Um, so my question when we're dealing with lenses is that when, when you're looking at um, a video, I think things that you should ask is, who is the narrator? Who's telling the story? Um, what perspective are they taking? Um, what type of transparency are they using and how are they telling the story? Okay, so anytime you're watching anything, these are some of the questions that should be asking because there's always a bias to that transparency. Okay. Um, this is a um, film called Dogville. Has anyone ever seen it? Okay, cool. This, um, it's Lars von Trier, okay, and I'm sorry if I'm not saying your name correctly. Uh, and he's part of a group of artists called Dogman 95. And what he and this group of artists decide that they were not gonna use technology to really enhance their films. So they tried to keep it as minimal as possible. 
to create an idea of performance. Because remember, performance is the origin. So when you go to film, you're already taking that origin and you're putting it into this reproduction, right? And so what these artists did is like, maybe we can reproduce production into film. And so a lot of his set designs are created on stage in a black box using everything that you see is on the stage. And so this would be a view. So you, so you had an aerial. That, that was the bird's eye view that I showed at first. And then here is another perspective view. OK. What I did was I created a film called Seek -A Go. And Seek -A Go is five short experimental films that tell the story of a journey with a traveler and a bagged woman. And they go through all of these kind of scenarios and phases of life. But each film in itself is a story of human and animal and earth ecology. So they, they work independently, but as a group, they work in telling this larger story. This one is called Breathing, and it's a short thriller. This one is Asphalt, and it's more of an observational documentary style. This one is the chicken and coyote, and it's a dance. It's a lust, it's a passionate dance between a chicken and a coyote. This one is Feast, and it is, talks about um, community, about uh, animal and human social eating behaviors. This one is called Flight, and it's kind of the idea of transcendence and the, the um, purging of obligatory you know, physical obligation. And, then, and flight is the transcendence. And I'm going to show a small video. OK, this is breathing. This one is a little dark. And maybe kind of think about how I'm manipulating the viewer here. Stop that there. You can see more. <laughs> if you look up Seek Go, you can see what happens at the end. The whole, the whole film is really interesting, and it takes you into these different spaces. And it actually, the more that you watch it, the more you'll see the, transgres the transgression 
and also how it can apply to different phases of your life. Like this one could be birth or death. Okay, um, moving forward. Okay, transparency of information. Um, this is a big one right now that's happening. Um, when I say transparency of information, what do you think? What comes to your head? Snowden. What's that? Snowden. Snowden. Okay, great. Leakage. What did you get? I said not the internet. Not the internet. No, not the internet. Yeah. <laughs> the, the black, the dark internet. WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks. Okay, transparency of information. Great. Anything else? I think of data. I just think of data, you know, like the idea of data existing. And, and as you mentioned before about alg algorithms and the collection of data. So right now there's a big collection of data that's happening. And it's very interesting of what they're doing with the data. And it's data on all of you, okay? And, and how they're separating you into all these different categories and selling you off to different av advertising. And it's this idea of data, okay? And this is a lack of transparency that's happening. Um, and so I'm, I'm curious as an artist of how one gets to understand more about data and what they would do with that data if you knew all about the things that people know about you. So, um, okay, I had to bring this in because Dave Edgers, has anyone read this book? Okay, it's very, very topical right now. And this goes with the lens and with the idea of information um, because he talks about this ultimate transparency. And we're seeing that now, of video cameras, people wearing video cameras, policemen wearing video cameras, people video camera, you know, like they're taking videos of each other, surveillance. And there's a, top, there's a term called zoo surveillance, and that's the people surveilling, doing surveillance on police officers, okay? So it's crazy, people are just videotaping and, and all of this is happening to gain ultimate transparency. But remember what I said about transparency earlier, okay? So it's this idea of ultimate transparency, but what's really happening, it's, it's kind of manipulating and skewing, and it's giving us an altered reality of what's really happening. And Dave Ed Kurz talks, talks about this, and it's an awesome book. I suggest you reading it because it really is topical for what's happening. And it inspired me to think bigger. Um, so, I. I I worked on a project with a group of artists, and uh, we did it at the Yerba Buena Center for the Arts in San Francisco, and we did it on um, biosensors. So biosensors are very interesting. And right now, you're all carrying cell phones. Cell phones probably have 14 to 30 different sensors in there. They're, they're collecting data from you, from your temperature to your vocal sounding to where you are motion to your heart rate potentially. So there's all these different sensors that you're carrying around. And that, I think, is very interesting, that data that's being collected that's about your body. It says a lot about your health or your mentality and it can be used with, a, you know, I, I'm not sure. This would be your, your question of how data can be used um, in your you know, psychology, your health. Yeah, keep going. Uh, we did a project called Vessels and Vessels was a um, installation that we did taking the heart rate and transcoding it into a sequence of water and air that traveled through a tube and then sounded and resonated on a big steel drum. And here's a small video to see how that works. Hopefully. Doing okay? Five minutes, perfect. Can carry oxygen and flood the floor after the container will leave. In a more spiritual sense, a vessel can be a person regarded as a holder or receiver of sound. In vessels, water is used to visually and sonically represent that The visitor's heart rate is measured by reading blood density in the finger tip and transposed into a liquid sequence which travels through the tube and the gallery. Okay, great. Uh, I'll quickly go through this. This was the data sculpture that we did for the AAAS, the annual um, association of scientists that come together. 
And this is just showing the interdisciplinary connect connection of scientists, because it's happening in art, it's happening in all different fields. People are coming together to solve problems. And so with this sculpture, um, we had people come together and show the, how the disciplines were connecting, or the scientists to this. Uh, this one's kind of a funny, sort of sad story, and it's uh, about uh, what's happening with fracking. Uh, in Ohio, this is a big deal, actually, because fracking is happening all over. And there's a lot of um, information that's hidden. It's not very transparent at all. There's no regulations. And I did a lot of investigation on the concoctions that they use um, to uh, create less friction when they drill to, to grab the natural gas. And so this was a story about that and looking at how um, to purify it. So water can always be purified. So this is a performance piece that we did about a character who polluted the water through building concoctions, but his real goal was to clean the water and sell the water for a lot more money, which is happening. This is interesting. This is Ohio. This is outside of Columbus, actually. And I went on an aerial plane to look at some of these wells and to see, actually, because they, they had already issued about 4,000 wells that had not been drilled. And so this is just one. And this is and not a transparent at all. Everything's hidden underneath, and we don't even know what's going on down there. We're getting a lot of money for it. That's why Columbus is booming. But it has a lot of destruction underneath the soil. Lastly, and I'm, this is going to be quick, but this is Obelisk. Obelisk is a company that we started this year. And um, it is a group of artists that come together, and we make Im immersive environments. So you see from our prior work, we work in performance, we work in sensors, we work in kinetic sculptures, and now we're working with projection and uh, applying that in all different fields. There's two different levels. One is more business oriented. We are helping businesses create their missions and being able to really take that mission to the audience and to mass audiences. And the second one is conceptual. So we're really driving conceptual thought behind large scale installations. Um, this is uh, just kind of showing a smaller projection mapping that we did at the Ohio Art League Gallery um, in a cathedral. This was what we did for the Greater Columbus Arts Council patron party. Uh, this was just a kind of a mock-up. You'll see a lot of mock-up and designs that go behind these projects. This is called Pulse, or yeah, Pulse, and it's a Columbus and Rhythm, and we did these tetrahedrons that were really beautiful. I have a video of this too. This is what we did at the Independence Day Festival. As you can see, we were able to work on, to, we worked with a group of architects to design uh, the buildings, and then we, we created the skin. And then the last one that we did is mannequins. Um, and this is mannequin mapping, and we're working with Mondo Mannequins, a, a company based out of New York, to see how this can function in the world of visual merchandising. We're working with vi visual merchandisers. This one, um, talking about transparencies, we actually broke apart a projector and then recreated it using lenses, um, a screen, and then another screen that you can't see back here that we were able to focus it, like two eyes, onto another, another screen. So showing how transparencies go from, there's m multiple transparencies that work in the art of projection and light. And this is, because we have to stop, but I'll show you this last video. Only two seconds of it, though. Yeah. Okay, so that kind of leaves it for, to there. I'd love to open it up to discussion. We have so many interesting topics to go in there. I'll stop that there. Can I give the field back to you, or how does that work? Well, first let us applaud. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>